What's up guys? I'm bringing you another video for you guys today. This one is about geometry dash levels and their difficulties. So, I've created uh, six different difficulties. So we got easy, normal, hard, harder, insane, and demon. I'm gonna put every level in one of those tiers and I'm gonna rank them within the tiers to find out exactly what is the hardest and easiest levels in the game. So, let's get started. So we're going to start with base after base, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this in the easy category. It's a really easy level. It's one of the original seven, and spoiler alert, all seven of those original seven uh, levels, they're all going to go in the easy category. So, it's a very easy level, nothing difficult about it. Should be able to do it. Back on track, also going to put that in the easy category. Easier than base after base, but still very, very easy. Like, there's nothing really to say because it's there's nothing hard about it. It's really, really easy. Next up, blast processing. I am going to go ahead and put this one in the hard category. I put it in the hard category because almost everything is easy about it, except there's one part, the UFO, the UFO timing part. Like there's some tricky UFO, that, tr that, that UFO part, the UFO parts in um, blast processing are very, very tricky for a level of its caliber. Because overall, the level's very easy, but the UFO parts bring it up much higher in difficulty. Next up is Clutterfunk, and I'm going to go ahead put this in the harder category. For a while, it, it was the hardest level. Like, for its time, that must I didn't play then when it came out, but it must have been a very hard level to do. For today's standards, it's still one of the hardest. The timings are very tricky, especially in the, those final cube parts, like 50% and on. The flying part, the initial flying part, that's tricky as well. It's overall a pretty tricky level. Can't let go. It's going to go in the easy category. Quite easy, except for the part with the black background. And the upside down part, those have some tricky timings. But it's definitely much, it's much harder than base after base. But it's still quite easy. Still going to go in the easy category. Next up we got club step. Nothing really to say here, demon. The difficulty suggests it. It's a demon level. Like the straight flying, the cube timings, the UFO timings. Everything about it suggests demon. It's it's a it's a deserved demon. It's not gonna drop down. It's definitely a demon. So there we go. Now cycles. That's gonna go in normal cat in the normal category. I put it in normal. In my opinion, cycles is the easiest level other than the original seven levels. Um, this level. There, I know people talk about the tr the volleys of triple spikes at the start of the level. Fine, those are sometimes can trip you up, but they're pretty spaced out. They're spaced out pretty far, and then you got the ball parts, and those are super easy. The only thing that's tricky is the coins, but we're not really going to consider that for this list. But yeah, cycles. It's a normal. It's a normal level. Deadlocked. Shouldn't really be any arguments here. It's the hardest level in the game. Hardest demon in the game. Overall, just just try playing it. Like, overall, it's the hardest. Like, not even... It's way harder than... Um, way harder than Theory of Everything 2 or Club Seth. So, Deadlocked is going to be top. Next, we got Dry Out. We're going to put that here. Easier than base after base. Harder than back on track. 
but still overall very very easy very easy everything about it it's really easy you just can't it's it's hard to get much easier than that but obviously you can get much easier than that but it's very easy very easy okay electroman adventures that is going to go in the hard category it is definitely definitely harder than blast processing but for the wrong reasons well there is some tricky timings in there but it's the worst design level in the entire game bar none hands down the the reverse the use of reverse portals are awful by the time you see where you can go after the transition you're already dead like there's no recovering from those and they're the mini cube like parts are pretty annoying like and not annoying as in hard or just annoying as in like buggy it's the worst it's the worst level in the game design wise but difficulty it's gonna rank ahead of blast processing in the hard tier electrodynamics insane it is very difficult when you first do it it's a very difficult level unless you did club step first but most people would go to electrodynamics first and it will challenge you like a lot of the parts are just developing skill like developing the skill to do it like there's not many memorization parts it's just like the triple speed flying parts those are all skill like you have to have a good amount of skill to beat electrodynamics it took me over a thousand attempts to do it first time it was a it was a lot but you'll get through it if you practice it but you have to get better like the skill has to be there it's not just memorization it's skill finger dash that is going to go in the harder category finger dash is a pretty hard level it introduces the spider but the spider parts in it are relatively easy the hardest part is the hardest part is definitely the mini wave and the wave part at the end with the mini coins those are definitely the, that's definitely the hardest part especially the mini waves those are pretty tight like and you can die there quite easily it also there's some tight ship spaces um with the fireballs there's some very that's that's pretty tight so that's why it ranks harder but it's not hard harder than clutterfunk um clutterfunk's timings are much harder to master and overall it's just tr a trickier level finger dash you can really get the hang of quite easily if you develop that skill but clutterfunk the timings are much trickier than in finger dash next up geometrical dominator it's gonna go in the harder tier the main part about this level is it introduces the robot but also the by far the hardest part is the memorization that's why it gets on the harder there are two parts of the memorization one at the start and one at the end the one at the end is much much harder but there are still some tricky robot timings and the part where you have to collect the green orbs to open the gates that's actually a pretty cool part i think it's one of the best design levels in the game personally i really like Ge geometrical dominator but it's it's this yeah it's it's really up up here f only for the memorization parts those are really tricky like they take a lot of memorization as the name suggests but hexagon force is next insane it is much harder than clutterfunk it is the memorization parts are very tricky but it's something you can memorize that's why electrodynamics is ranked harder on this list because electrodynamics takes more skill like i said before hexagon force is more about knowing what to do 
on that dual part, on those dual parts, like the double ball, that's all like knowing when to click, knowing when exactly to click. That's all memorization. That's you got to use practice mode for hexagon force. You can't just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. You have to use practice mode because you need to get that muscle memory in your head for hexagon force. So the dual parts are obviously the trickiest part. There is some, there, there is some quite hard um, flying parts at the end that can easily kill you. But overall, the dual parts are what make this level very unique but and difficult. So that's why it's in the insane tier. Jumper, easy tier. But it's, in my opinion, it is easier than Can't Let Go. Can't Let Go has one decently difficult part to it. Jumper, it's not difficult. It's easy all the way through. Can't Let Go, there's parts where you can die. Like, there's some parts where you can die. Jumper, it's really easy just all the way through. Like, there's nothing too hard about it, other than some of the coins, but that's obviously that's not what we're ranking today. Just overall, like, ship parts, you get more space. Actually, not really. But, really, it's the cube timings. The can't, can't let go cube timings are much harder than jumper's cube timings. Like, count the jumper's cube timings are quite easy. Like, but can't let go, it's it's much harder than jumper, in my opinion. The Because the upside-down parts are much, are much trickier. That's why. Now we got Poltergeist, easy category as well, nothing really much to say here, harder than back on track, easier than dry out, nothing really else to say, it's on the same level as all these guys. Stereo Madness, here's my take, some people say that Stereo Madness. Some people say that Stereo Madness is actually harder than Back on Track. I disagree with that because Back on Track is just more complicated overall. The ship spaces are tighter. The cube timings, there isn't really many cube timings, but ship spaces are tighter. It's overall more complicated for like a noob. Stereo Madness, there's those triple spikes, yes. that They do require a little bit of timing. But there are only two of them, and they're really easy once you get the hang of it. Stereo Man is definitely easier than Back on Track, in my personal opinion. Time Machine. We're going to go ahead, put this in the normal category, Ahead of Cycles. The reason why it's Ahead of Cycles is because the cube timings at the end, the upside down ones with the green background with the triple spikes, those are much harder than anything Cycles has to offer. So, there's really not much else to say. Like, Cycles doesn't have any really, like, parts that you're gonna say are hard. Time Machine has that one upside down part at the end that is very tricky. Next one. Theory of Everything 2. It's up here. Some people might say club step is harder. I don't think so. Overall, I think Theory of Everything 2 is harder. The reason why people say club step is harder, it took them more attempts. But I don't think that's necessarily right because most people do club step before Theory of Everything 2. So they already have the necessary skill set to beat Theory of Everything 2. But looking at it from an objective view, Theory of Everything 2, it's just much harder in general. Well, not much harder. It's a bit harder than club step. They're pretty close, but club step is definitely easier, in my opinion. Theory of everything one. This one, it's gonna go in the hard category. There is nothing really hard about theory of everything. It's overall harder than time machine, like all the way through, it's much harder than Time Machine, but it is just, there's nothing really, there's no real hard parts in it. Like, sure, those UFO spaces are a little tight, 
nothing as tight as the blast processing UFO spaces. So I'm going to have to put blast processing ahead of theory of everything. But that's just my opinion. X step. Last one. It's in the normal. And it's right here. Right in the middle. X step has overall tighter ship spaces. Then cycles and harder ballparks, but Time Machine, it's just, it has that one upside down part at the end that just makes it automatically harder the next step, and in Time Machine there are much more triple spikes, which I know I said in Stereo Madness, once you get them down pat it's easy, but there's a lot more in Time Machine, they're a lot close together as well. In next step there's nothing really like that, there are some tight ship spaces, but other than that, the time machine is definitely easier. So that concludes my tier list. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree. A lot of you are probably going to disagree with this, but if you disagree, leave a comment below. Tell me, and see you in the next video.